I fucking love that. <laughs> Fuck yeah. This is going to be the best episode ever. Arwen's not here to share with us. What the fuck, Arwen? Oh, I've got family thing going on. <laughs> so, we love you, Arwen. Sorry you're not here with us to celebrate yeah, because... Much love to Arwen. Mission accomplished. Now, people are going, mission's not accomplished. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. He has dethroned every single fucking asshole that was a problem at Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. And my favorite one, and I'm going to share my screen here, and, and I just, I cannot tell you how fucking ecstatic I was when this article popped up. Everybody's looking at this. I said, you don't understand. There's something in between the story here. And if you're not catching it, this is Walter Hamada's fucking obituary. And what <laughs> makes it fucking funny to us and tragic for him <laughs> is this is his obituary and nowhere is he even mentioned nowhere but it is said right here on the day uh emmerich's departure last week zaslav made it known that he was separating that's it right here uh, on the day of emmerich's departure last week zaslav made it known that he was separating the movie side of the studio into three buckets warner brother new line and DC and Warner Animation. Uh, DeLuca and Abdi will be overseeing, uh, oversee DC in the interim upon their arrival. A search is underway for <laughs> the new head of DC right there. That is his fucking obituary. Hamada's right the head, Gary. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Walter Hamada is <laughs> fucking, that is his fucking obituary. That he's no longer the head of DC. They're looking for someone right now. Like they're looking. He's right there. He's like, hey. he's still sitting in an office <laughs> reading this on deadline, and it's fucking sitting there with his copy. Oh, it's too bad about uh, uh, my buddy Toby. Oh, his story. Oh, mm. yeah, I'm being a fucking racist asshole by putting a fucking Japanese voice to Hamada. You know, that kind of is very reminiscent of what Doomcock had said about how Peter Rice got fired. And it was slightly even more embarrassing for him because he almost got perped walked up to Chapek's office. And the whole thing wow. took seven minutes to get him out. And, you know, wow. um, as <laughs> awesome as that is, I still call uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, Bob Chapek a fucking stooge. Because, um, and we'll get into this in a minute. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a stooge, and I'll explain why when we get to that article over on about Marvel. But, um, you know, what do you guys think about this shit, man? Is this not amazing? That's cold. We're, it's cold. We're living in an amazing time, aren't we? <laughs> it's cold. I, mean, I, I predict yeah. that DC is going to kick the shit out of Marvel now. Because oh, Marvel's, Marvel's giving him a chance. Working stupid. Marvel's mm -hmm. working stupidly right now. Feige's not doing his job like he used to do. Uh, and we're going to see a huge transition. 
uh, with what's going on. And so, mm-hmm. I mean, um, God damn it. You know, we see how this- Zaz of moves, right? Like, you know, it's this in phases. If you see, like, from the beginning of the merger, he's like, I'm going to take care of the higher, the, the Warner Media hierarchy. And they were just like dissolved in one day, right? And he says, Next, I'm going to the film division. And then we see what's happened this past month. It's like he's wiped out the entire well, we said, WB film execs. On this yeah. show, we said that, you know, a lot of this would be wrapped up by June. Yeah. And that Hamada would be gone. By June, we yeah. predicted that. We yeah. also predicted first that so would Toby Emmerich, but then we got wind of his new contract. So we said, well, then he'll probably be gone by December. Fucking by June. All of them. <laughs> That's what's not playing around, bro. We were well, right the first time. We need to stop second guessing ourselves. Right? Well, I think I think a lot of the stuff with with Ezra Miller helped to really push a lot of that forward quicker. I think there was an, there, there was the, almost a willingness to wait, but after a while, you just get beat over the head so many times in the media, so much stuff comes out that I think Zasloff had just about had it. You know you know how you know mom and dad could only take so much from the kids, and they just decided, you know what? Everybody's in trouble. Everybody's getting a whipping. Yeah, and, and, and just to make it clear to everybody... <laughs> David Zaslav fucking loves The Rock, and he loves fucking Henry Cavill. Mm -hmm. This is not a secret. He fucking loves them. He despised Ezra Miller. And I love the story when it broke, uh, and we know Mikey was the one who broke it, that he was raging through the studio because he moved on to the studio a lot. People don't realize he was there. on the lot, yeah. And when that shit broke in Hawaii, fucking... Fucking Zaslav was raging through that office. People were cowering and hiding in their offices. I guarantee you people were under their desks. I fucking bet you Keep money. This is the film George division George. execs. All yeah. of them are about hiding. To be, are being fired because one by one. He's walking around that office <laughs> screaming, where is Emrick? I'm going to kill him. Yeah. You think <laughs> hiding in your office and locking the door means anything? I mean, it's just like when you lived at home with mom and dad. If you lock the door, dad's just going to kick it down. And it's only going to make him matter. Daddy Zaslav. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's exactly. Crazy, and he so. got the Carolyn Blackwood. She's the second in command. She stepped down. It's just, it's just domino effect here. It's, man. He's taking, it's, it's a complete takeover. And this, this not only saves the, you know, the superhero genre, like we like DC, but just films as a whole for WB. The culture of Warner Brothers has been tainted with Sujahara, Emirates. Mm-hmm. So, this is major. I mean, what Zazim is doing is like legacy, like level, <laughs> like, you know, so it's exciting. Right. Th- these are good times. Uh, come on, 24-7. Put some two cents into this. Uh, down with the axe. Let's, let's, let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. It's, nah, but uh, honestly, um, I, I think it, it was about time. I just hate that a lot of things got great. It's like a lot of people knew that their time was up. That's why CNN Plus went up. That's why a lot of people tried to do their last minute uh, mm-hmm. green lighting of shows and movies and all kind of shit. And to be honest, that should have been a real fuck you to uh, David Vasloff it, to his face. That yeah. when people knew, you know, people knew this fucking merger was going down. And they did everything they can to kind of green light and 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 mm-hmm. just use up the company's money and and you know uh, hook up their homeboys and and mm-hmm. listen to much shit. All this shit was going, and that's why as soon as he stepped on, he started uh, uh, stopping. You know, like the fucking uh, like people were tripping how everything happened with uh, the Wonder Twins. Mm-hmm. When, when, you know, they were actually getting ready to roll with that one, and he nope, let's stop that and cut this mm-hmm. off and we're not doing that anymore and then the CW I don't even see oh. how Greg Belanti oh. even is doing Green Lantern because all he's doing is is basically taking his shenanigans from, from the CW and moving mm-hmm. it over to HBO Max with a bigger budget <clears throat> and, and having the same motherfuckers that sat there and, and did that shit ass <clears throat> Green Lantern movie doing mm-hmm. the Green Lantern TV show for HBO Max the exact same people everybody yeah. involved and then that's a waste of money. That's a that's an idea that uh, you know we were talking earlier. Uh, you know, y'all that that don't know, Keith had you know was making a very valid point on what exactly could be done with 
Green Lantern as a as an IP, you know, the stories and everything. If you know anything about Green Lantern, that thing can be phenomenal if it's done right mm-hmm. and approached the right mm-hmm. way. And right now, you yeah, and just see, so you guys know, this is something we were talking about before story. the show. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. But what we're about to see is Green Lantern getting destroyed. And you know what? That should have been, it, it, I guess it's just the fact that it was too far uh, ahead, you know, to, to do anything about it. Uh, it's going to hurt him more than it's going to help him. That's going to yeah. be a real test for Zaz. That's a good point with uh, 24. If, if Zaz is really, I mean, we, I think he's really about this, right? He's about this life. Like He's asking everything. So, is he on La Berlanti? Because they haven't started production yet with that series, Green Lantern series. Is, is he going to let this slide? Or, you know, is he going to ask this just like Wonder Twins? You know what? I think he's going to get Ber- – look, he has a good relationship with Berlanti. He kind of likes the guy. But we've seen what he can do to people he likes if you're mess with the money. That is the number one rule uh-huh. of business. Don't mess with the money. If this ends up not doing anything – and working counter to all of the advancements that they have made so far with this company, I wouldn't put it past Zaslav to just go, uh, it's done. Yeah. Just cut it off. Because people think like things going into production, like, oh, it's going to, you know, like 24 was saying, they was pushing this stuff in production, like Wonder Twins. I got a uh, production info, I get screenshots, and they were like in pre prep mm-hmm. for Wonder Twins, and they had production, like photography set up. You know, like a month before the merger started. And so Zazov came in at that point. People was getting hired. You know, people were cast for this. Yeah. He had well, things booked, and he, he, he slaughtered it. So I'm just saying, Berlanti, this, it can't be safe. This is not the only time that's ever happened to Warner Brothers. Remember, they had that Justice League movie that they had years ago, and they were within days of production. They had the, 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 the all of the costumes were, were, were created. And they were they were getting ready to go before the cameras, and the whole thing got axed. Mm. Mm. And axed yeah, it, so no, did nothing safe. Hey, did, hey, did you see their 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 Wonder Woman for that that movie you're talking about? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh she. Oh, that was a. Uh, the dough, man. Yeah. She looked like. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. The dough ain't she ain't nothing compared to the to the the person they picked. I think it was that 2002. Well, yeah. Wasn't it right around the early 2000s when they were coming out yeah. with that, just, yeah. that Wonder Woman? She was beautiful. I mean, she was perfect, man. Holy yeah. shit. But uh, with Zazzle, too, uh, and 24 mentioned one thing, too. Uh, the first thing Zazzle really hit was that CNN Plus. Like, first day in the door, he was like, okay, we're stopping this. It just launched. <laughs> he was like, we're canceling a, a app, like, out the gate. Like, that's unheard of, man. Like you said, that was a that was a middle finger out the door that Keelar and, gave and, to Zaz. So you taking my job, okay? Like, Suck like about that. two, three hundred million on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, yeah, I heard they, that shit so much money, and, and and it even last past what twenty eight days, and that shit was yeah. It didn't make it a month. You mess so with the money, how far here go? Yeah, exactly. It's about money, and you know that wasn't. It was stupid. You have a central app. Why are you doing a separate news app? That was very stupid. Yeah, you know, but that's over regime. That's why they're fired. <laughs> you know, ultimately, Warner Brothers. I think, as we've stated before, it looks like Zaslav is just basically trying to fix this up enough so he can eventually turn around and sell it. And that's the whoever angle. whoever ends up buying this is going to get a company that's in really, really, really good shape. You know, and actually, I was thinking, what, what what happens if this thing goes so well that he end up keeping this motherfucker? Well, there, either way, he's gonna have ties to it. Like yeah, even right, when right, he right, sells right. off, he's gonna have his stock options. He, mm-hmm. he wants this to be successful because he's gonna retire off of this. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, but yeah, I mean that's that, that's a thing though. Twenty four. It's like, what if it's going so good? It's like let's keep this train rolling. You know, but um, but in the beginning when they announced his merger. Me and Mikey was talking about that too. It was like like four or five years. He wants to flip this. You know, you flip a company no, 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 like I, this. Yeah, they would. Yeah, we uh we talked about that uh you mm-hmm. know while ago. I remember hearing about that. Um, That's the over plan. A year ago, man, when they when when they started to pursue it, that the purpose of buying this is to, you know, get rid of all the bullshit, beef it up, and then sell it, man, and and may sell it in sections too. 
But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Right, right. And Bino, but I was thinking, you know, but what happens if, if after all the hard work he's about to put into correcting, you know, all the bullshit that's going on with this company, he just looks at it and everything's, you know, they, you know, DC's fucking beating out Marvel, you know, fucking, you know, shit's getting better. You know, people are, are spending money in the theater to watch their movies. Hopefully he brings back Christopher Nolan, you know, after the whole mm-hmm. Warner Brothers fuck up. You know, there's a lot of things he, he needs to fix that, you know, that that all that um, the streaming service, HBO Max and all that shit had fucked up. It actually, it destroyed a lot of relationships with actors and a lot of directors. Mm-hmm. And hopefully he mm-hmm. can fix some of that shit to bring back, you know, the people that he needs in order to, you know, create some of the good shit that we enjoy. You know, the, the fact that Warner Brothers, you know, that, you know, that company destroyed their relationship with Christopher Nolan. Dude. Yeah. <sighs> Come on, man. I mean, he's tried well, and true, man. And, and, he, and, and he was a Warner Brothers man. As soon as I heard that Zazav, it was confirmed, he reached out to Nolan and like they had constant conversations. I was like, oh, I was like, Toby's done. Because Nolan, that's the first thing. He's, that's why Nolan went to Universal, because of Toby Emery. You know, an all tour mm-hmm. director. You lose him because you didn't want to give him a full theatrical run for his next film. That's why he left. Uh, Toby said, no, he's going to give you 45 days. You know, so that messes up bonuses. That messes up his uh, no one's right. money. So mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, Zaz is going to repair relationships right there." Showed me. Uh, with yeah. No one. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, move on to the next subject by first taking a moment of silence for um, Toby Emmerich <laughs> and Walter Hamada. You will be missed by no one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, in the immortal words of Curly (laughs) Bill Brocious. Well, bye. So there we go. Let's move on to something interesting. Um, J.J. Abrams. Um, Now, I I really, I I don't give two shits about this article because I really just want to talk to Sil here on this one. Because... (laughs) With with the death of um, Walter Hamad and Toby Emmerich, that was it. That the friends of J.J. Abrams are gone. Yeah, he doesn't have friends at, at Warner anymore. Mm. Um, uh, no, well, well, I mean, he still has Matt Reeves. Yeah, Matt Reeves like on an island somewhere. Like. Yeah, he doesn't matter. Yeah, but, but 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 that's uh, but but Matt Reeves comes from J.J. I'm talking about executives. People oh, who make decisions. Yeah, he doesn't have yeah. any friends. Uh, oh, why yeah, would it? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure he's got a lot of producer director friends who are like, "We love you." <laughs> you know, <laughs> cupping at balls while they milk it, and uh, so. But no, when it comes to JJ, <laughs> any friends who who were in charge at Warner Brothers are gone, and um, I predict that anything that he had planned is gone. Well, yeah. Well, I still got that Batman animated series. Well, that's that's it's in production. It's uh, you know once we'll again. See. This is what we keep talking about. <laughs> Greenlit is one thing. In production is something else, and it depends on how far into production. Because A T right. is proven that they will walk in and cancel a show when it's already seven episodes in. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So they did it. The first brown. thing they did is they canceled Swamp Thing, mm-hmm. and. Uh, in, in while they were preparing to shoot the seventh episode, which is why Inside. everything from seven on is crap, is crap. Yeah. on that series because it just got all fucked up. It got squished. We have to wrap this up instead of in thirteen episodes in in ten. Mm-hmm. And let's see with the J.J. Abrams thing. The, um, Zaz have already axed uh, that original sci-fi drama that he was trying Monday. to do through you know Bad Robot. Uh, Dini, Look, day, his only dumb. chance right now, in my yeah, opinion, is uh, anything original. And they asked that. So it's like, so now you hear me because the budget was going sky high. Uh, and that article it touched on, or it referenced an article. So that's so basically, he's not going to put up with his shit. Yeah, he wanted more than $200 million <laughs> for an original series when uh, Game of Thrones kept the budget under 200 for the yeah. House of Dragons. And he's like, why am I spending more on this original unknown? Than Game of Thrones. That's how Zaz of things. Like Keith was saying, it's about the money. Because it's JJ Abrams, baby. It's yeah, like, well, wait well, a minute. Zaz Did he destroy fuck, Star fuck Wars Abrams? and Star Trek? <laughs> he said, fuck JJ Abrams. Zaz once said, fuck uh, Clint Eastwood. 
Okay. So well, and that blew my care. mind because he's got them a lot of Oscars. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, Zaps yeah. don't care. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I kind of felt a little funny about that. Show business. <laughs> you know, he's yeah, one I, of those I, I guys. Because oh wait, what? No, I was saying I I understood that. I I was just thinking like the way the way that whole Clint Eastwood situation. I, I read on that and I was like, man, that dude's been with the company for over. Over what, over fifty years? Yeah, mm-hmm. Zaslav, Zaslav is is right. absolutely a business guy, and it's and he's just million. like the uh, what is that <laughs> Janet Jackson song? What have you done for me lately? That, that's what I'm saying. They lost forty million dollars. They spent forty million actually to put out uh, Clint Eastwood's film. Only made fifteen million worldwide. That's a yeah. loss. Oh, I thought it, was- it is a loss. It's absolutely a loss. Yeah. But this is the sort of thing that producers, m- big actual movie. Pro- See, David is not a movie producer. He's a businessman. So I, he's not going to understand what Eastwood means to Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee you Discovery yeah, does. Uh, Discovery, and I warn people too, Discovery is absolutely woke. If you don't think they're woke, go check out their fucking <laughs> programming. But they're intelligently yeah. woke. Because if it doesn't make money, if it doesn't exactly. bring in viewership, exactly, it's gone. I'm telling and, you, Zaza, I know he's a capitalist. He has to be. But if there's an audience for like a, you know, just a transgender show or some kind of documentary, he's going to give that to the audience. If, if there's an audience watching. to watch paint if dry, audience, he'll give it to him. He'll give it to <laughs> exactly. Him. But as soon as he I mean, starts losing really money, he doesn't care. <laughs> I mean, he's already doing it with Discovery with the, uh, with the Tyra Banks show about kids being you know, drag queens and shit. Mm-hmm. Right. Are people watching it? And and, and that's just it. If, if it's got an audience, because this is what I tell people yeah. all the time. Look, as long as you aren't grooming kids, I'm okay with whatever you do. But when you start involving kids, I've got a problem. So if we've got shows about kids and tra- being trans, I've got a fucking moral issue. I'm not even Christian. Mm-hmm. I have no religious beliefs. I absolutely have a fucking problem with that on a moral, ethical level. That you right. shouldn't be involving children in anything that deals with sex. And I don't just Not mean uh, the sexual act, but sex in general. It, it sexual just, identity. If they're under that. puberty, don't fucking involve them. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, yeah. we... It's like we, that's an audience, that he, he'll do it, right? But with JJ, so he canceled that original idea. Now people, Mikey was reporting about the Black Superman. That budget was going near $300 million. Oh, so that's, probably next. that's probably next on the chopping block. Uh, they have not officially moved forward. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, that, that. That's $300 million. Million. You know that that pretty much is the budget for everything we've seen Henry Cavill in collectively. <laughs> I mean, that's more than BVS. That's more than Justice League. You know, that's more than Chris Re- all of Chris Reeves' movies crazy. together. Crazy. Oh. So JJ is out of his mind with this these ideas that he's trying to do. So yeah. <laughs> so let's get back to uh, something interesting because this will lead to what we brought up earlier, uh, which is um, Ms. Marvel. Uh, I don't know if it's a good show or not. I'm not going to watch it because I think it's creepy for older guys to be watching teen tween shows about girls. It's like who's this directed at? Who who do you who is your audience for this show clearly it, they, they 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 want it to be girls but the fact is is if you say anything negative about this you'll get attacked for it but my negative thing is this is a show not for people like me and if people like me are watching it um you need to be aware of that because mm-hmm. that's fucking huh? weird well but i will all... say this that i do understand cameron patch's uh, uh stance on this that he believes that this is an, a wonderful representation of uh, uh, Pakistani Muslim family, and uh, and I get it. He likes that. Uh, I I admire and respect him, and I, I and I agree. Maybe that is good. This is not a show for grown fucking men over over fucking thirty. Yeah. Well, also, also it goes against why they purchased Marvel. You know. Well, yeah, and it goes it, right back into that. And this is once again uh, something that you and I've talked about, and. We talked about before the show, and I really kind of want to dig into this, which is um, a certain person, because everybody wants to th- throw the knives at, at Kevin Feige on this, but Kevin Feige didn't start derailing Marvel on his own. Uh, it started when they hired a certain person to be president over Marvel, 
And that certain person is Victoria Alonso. And Victoria Alonso is an outspoken advocate and pushing for stuff like this. She doesn't want Marvel for little boys. She wants Marvel for anybody who is of different groups, but boys, uh, trans, gay, um, le- you know, that includes lesbian uh, and female, female empowerment. And she mm-hmm. wants to use Marvel for female empowerment uh, and fuck those of us with the male chromosome. Well, and this is a problem yeah. for Marvel. Mm-hmm. This is a problem for Disney. So uh, you brought up, we talked earlier about, uh, 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 what's his name, Mark Rice getting walked out, escorted out by, <laughs> by security <laughs> under uh, Bob Iger, I mean, Bob, uh, Bob Chapek. And, and yeah. he's like, you know, I don't fucking care. I know that's just a personal fucking beef with him because we know that Rice was involved with that walkout, that he was the one orchestrating it. Mm-hmm. So and Rice was up next. If Chapik was fired, Rice would have been next in line. So it, this well, was personal. But on yeah, top of he, that, Rice had been hoarding information. He had been basically acting like he was gonna. He was gathering power underneath him. And, and, and I also think he was a source of some of the leaks. That was mm-hmm. side note. I know too. Peter Rice is a Fox guy. He came over with the merge when they bought Fox. So again, this is like a cultural battle. Uh, mm-hmm. So Chapik so, was like, take him out. <laughs> yeah, now I'm going to tell you my general feeling on this, and you guys just take off with it, is that Bob Chake's a pussy. I don't think that he's got the cojones to take out anybody he doesn't have a personal grudge with. Uh, uh, Victoria Alonso has done brand damage, IP damage to Marvel, uh, to the level of Kathleen Kennedy. Mm-hmm. She has completely derailed the MCU. And turned it into something that fans are rebelling against. And if, you know, and, and here we go. This is same thing, Lucas tactic. It's like, if you don't like what is being done at Marvel, it's your fault. You, you, you watching, you fans, you're toxic. You're toxic fans. There's no such thing as toxic fans. There's only fans. Look, there are toxic people with any group. Any group. Yeah. But we're not going to call them toxic fans. That What... what the important word that they're using in that is fan. That they're trying to attach toxic and fan, which de- does damage to the fan base, mm-hmm. and that's what that's about: is doing damage to the fan base. It's dismissing the the, the opinion of the fan base, Maybe and they're, they're not going to get away anymore. with it. We're not going to let them get away with it, uh, and they're going to work themselves in or paint themselves into a corner. And Alonzo's doing it right now. And if Feige leaves at any point, she is absolutely going to destroy Marvel. So do we thoughts, think guys? so? Which, if if, Ch- if Chapik is so off, I, I kind of want your opinion. If he's so off on his thinking and getting rid of Peter Rice, didn't wouldn't Chapik have the blessing of a and like Susan Arnold, uh, the, the chairman uh, mm-hmm. uh, of the board there? Like well, that's the reason why the board backed him up. They came right, out with a, a letter awkward. backing him up. Firing Peter Rice. So obviously mm-hmm. they are trying to move very gingerly from 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 at least an mm-hmm. outsider's point of view. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure they have a hit list. I'm pretty sure no they know exactly who they want to go after, and they're trying to target this at specific times nah. so that everyone else doesn't try to band together or you know try to try to right. do something against what they're attempting to do. I honestly think that. Chapek and 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 Arnold and the rest of the Disney executives have a plan. They just mm. aren't Zaslav. Zaslav doesn't care. Right. Okay. Zaslav will take an axe to whatever and whomever is in his way. Chapek <laughs> doesn't really have that going for him. So yeah. he has to be very gingerly because there's still mm. the distinct possibility that he could be out of a job in, in less than a year. Mm. Which Isn't would, it a turn? Like, because Gary was, I know Gary, you're not that optimistic still. Because I thought this was a, a move in the right direction by Chapin. Because, you know, if he has the blessing of the board this, and they're trying it's to. It's not move, because of the fact that it was a personal thing. Okay. This, it had you, nothing okay. to do about riding the ship. It had okay. to do with, um, I know it was Protecting. you, Fredo. I know it was <laughs> right, you. Right, right, right. And then the boat right out to the river that and a bullet sense. in the head. Uh, that's what this is about. Uh, I yeah. mean, sure, it had a little bit to do with business, but very little because mm. if he really cared about business, like he's 
did with Rice there, then he would have done the exact same thing with Victoria Alonso. When he does it to Victoria Alonso, I will change my tune on him. Yeah. And, and as far as Mr. Allen, I don't even think he even got the boat ride. He walked in like it was Lethal Weapon 2 and saw the plastic on the floor and went, uh-oh. And next thing you know, lights out and he's talking to Elvis. So, you know. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> I just... It, so it, it, the, it it was like that. It was like that. So, so the jury still out on Chapin because I, I was like, hey, it was a surprising move, and I just you know was hoping it was going in the right direction. But mm -hmm. like you are saying, Keith, we may have to wait a little longer for these power moves, like like Zazib is doing. We're getting spoiled <laughs> by, well, by Zazib. Well, but the other thing is, is that Warner Brothers, while they did have a lot of very woke people within their their industry within their company. What Bob Iger did to Disney is he brought in people on purpose. He put people in places to make it more of what it is right now. If you're going to try to to uh, 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 get rid of those people, Zaslav didn't have to work that hard. He swung right. the axe, and I'm pretty sure some of the people that, that he ended up getting rid of weren't, even, weren't really woke themselves. They were just being bad business-wise. Bad business. All of you guys, according to, to, to Zaslav, everybody working for Warner Brothers is working here for one single purpose. And he would go up to each individual and ask you what that purpose is. Mm -hmm. The correct mm -hmm. answer is making money. So why any make answer, the Wood movie? <laughs> any answer that was not that means that you were not here for the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that at Disney now. Bob Iger mm. did a really good job in, in, in making sure that you have a lot of people that have been replaced. I mean, you know, mm. one is basically taking out an invasion or an infestation. The other one is the invasion's already happened. Right, the, 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 right. the people are already in place in different areas. You can't just like take Marvel's over here. You can't just Lucas go in like Zaslav to Disney. You can't yeah. do that. It takes a different way of operating. That's true. Now, is that is he going to have enough time before he might get booted out? Who knows? All I do know is whoever the board and Susan Arnold bring in next mm -hmm. is going to have to be someone who's going to have to stand up and not only be strong. But be someone who is very effective. You can't bend the knee. You yeah. can't say I'm sorry. You're gonna have to be there. You gotta be a bad guy. You gotta yeah. wear that black hat and you're gonna have to be the bad and, and understand, you may not even make it to the promised land once all this is done. Once everything's been cleaned out, you may not make it. He's like but Moses, you... man. <laughs> <laughs> but if if you are willing to wear that black hat, and do what needs to be done. You're a religious guy? <laughs> hey, I'm not religious, but I, I know my fucking theology. You know your stories, okay? Yeah, and and and, 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 and just raised. just for Susan Arnold, if you do get rid of Chapek, I'm willing to be your black hat. I'm willing to I, walk into that room and give the baseball speech from the Untouchables. So I'm wondering with the board coming out because again, we never heard Susan Arnold ever do a statement until this peter rice thing right mm -hmm. and like was that a real vote of confidence in your eyes or is it like just you know publicly we don't want to make it look like champ in his last days or what would you what'd you think personally i think she'd like him to stick around but if he continues to to mess up like bend the knee when he shouldn't then her for her view is like you on your own you, he doesn't you, have an you're, you're there to clean this up now you yeah, are there yeah. To clean up. If you cannot do that job, I will find somebody to do that job. Or at least David mm. Zasloff, ask him if he can clone himself and bring that clone over here. Because <laughs> <Just bring it back. laughs> that's, that's what you need. she wants. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, moving on to the next one, mates. This should be a, a good one. Um, Spider-Man uh, related. So you can't complain oh, about this. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start talking about Sony releasing longer version of Spider-Man No Way Home into the theaters. Uh, now, in this article, Joy Lynn, uh, or wait, Edwin Francisco wrote this, and he's quoting his wife, Joy Lynn. Uh, so Sony returned Spider-Man No Way Home in theaters. They should have done this when the Batman came out. I'm telling you. It's official. <laughs> we'll be seeing the three Spider-Man back in theaters uh, on February 20th, Geek City writer Joy Lynn uh, said that it, they would be bringing it back. We were all kind of hoping that it would uh, help kill the Batman. 
which would hurt uh, right, Hamada. Right. <laughs> Not because I, I have a grudge against anybody else. It's all about Walter Hamada and Tubby. Oh, yeah. But it, um, it, it turns out we didn't need that, right? But didn't it need it. <laughs> uh, so this is neat. I think this is good news. Um, and it's going to help push them over that. How, what was it they were wanting to hit? Uh, then they got one point. They wanted the two billion. billion. They want two billion. Yeah. And there it is. They're at one point eight eight six. So Ooh. fucking close. That's possible. You know? And it's I think 100? they could hit over two billion. So easy, you're, easy. You're, given given what's in theaters right now, given the state of theaters, we are between. We are between Top Gun Maverick. And it's looking more and more like Jurassic World Dominion has pretty much ambered the bed. So uh, we Amber. can go ahead and, you know, be able to bring Spider-Man back and just scoop up all those people that would like to see it. And from what I'm hearing, this will be a slightly different version than just putting it back in theaters. Interesting. This will be a version where they're going to add back in certain scenes that had been originally cut out. So this is definitely going to be something that if you were a fan of the film, come back in. You're going to mm -hmm. see something a little bit different than what you saw last different time around. Experience. Yeah. It's a good so, idea. That's a good idea. They can get a couple yeah. hundred K from that and hit that two billion. That's all they need. I, all they need is about 200,000. Oh, I, I, I'm going to bet money. 200 million. They get, they're going to get a few million for this. They, they, they get a couple it, million out of that. I think they will make money. Would you say 24? That'd be interesting. So uh, is, is this the one where I keep hearing that Daredevil's going to show up? Ooh. Just more Matt Murdock. Um, yeah. Or I, yeah, that, yeah. There because there was a big that. plot hole in there about like how all of a sudden nobody cared what he had, you know, who he, he was. He was like and, free. I was like, how did he, you know, something legal had to Matt happen. Matt Murdock, the, you know, yeah. there, there has to be a scene that we missed. That explains right. that away. Yeah, so, because this first cool the part. first act was terrible for me. This film, mm -hmm. it was one of the worst first acts I've seen. And so, I was I was glad when you saw start seeing William Defoe and everyone that really saved this film. Um, but like I said, it's like probably missing scenes, Gary. Like you said, well, it absolutely, and it's the same thing I complained about with Ghostbusters Afterlife is that uh, they spent too much time on scenes that didn't need it, uh, not enough time on scenes that they set up stuff and then got nothing for it. And I told Keith coming out of the movie, I said, I bet you a lot of scenes uh, that answered things ended up on the uh, uh, editing room floor. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't have been. That movie should have been longer. But going in, into this, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, you guys think we're, you know, I think they're going to make a, a few million off of this. If they get a million, like, that's a total win. For I mean, they have like, more man. to go. Uh... Yeah, yeah it, think, if it turns it into a new story worthwhile, yeah, I agree with you, 24. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're we're in agreement, I think. Um, I mean, I mean it, 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 it's actually what they would have gotten if they got like a director's cut for DV, uh, on DVD or Blu-ray or some shit. You know, it's, it's like you've seen it in theater, it's, you know, before it actually heads mm -hmm. out. So basically, let's say when it when it's time to release it, have, they haven't released it on a DVD or Blu-ray and all that shit yet, have they? Uh, well, no, they yeah, they released the theatrical version. Yeah, theatrical uh, version. I got that on 4K. Yeah. Uh, I can see them dropping a, a, a director's cut or yep. an alternate version, whatever. Another yeah, physical then, media. You know, it's mm -hmm. another way to make money. Even you know yep. after this plays out in the theater, they can fucking make. They should money. be really honest with it, though, twenty four, okay. and call it the uh, studio's cash grab. Cause that's what it is. <laughs> they already got my money, right? I already. I don't mind the them cash one. grabbing, but. <laughs> Now I'm gonna buy this one now when they release this on 4K. So, and yeah. uh, the pressing is there. I mean, uh, obviously Disney did with, with uh, uh, Endgame. They did the re-release in the theaters with the the shitty CGI extra scenes, right? So, but this looks more finished. But then the precedence too. Uh, they may do that with Multiverse of Madness. It's a rumor. They may do a longer cut of yeah, that. Yeah, but you and I, too. but we talked about this before. There, there's no fucking way we'll ever see the first cut. And not, the, not before the reason of vault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Disney never, never that. allows that stuff out. It's <laughs> mm -hmm. in the same vault with uh, uh, what's that? that Snow movie? White, Dumbo. No, the the the, <laughs> the Southern song that's racist. The Disney movie. Oh, Disney. Song of the South. Uh, even though it's not racist, Uncle Remus's right. character is not a racist character. But they call it's, it racist, so it is. And but they call it racist. <laughs> and, and the full version of John Carter. But the Doctor oh, Strange yeah. that, that missed that uh, the thirty five minutes missing that cut, 
that's what we're talking about for Multiverse of Madness. That may be re-shown in theaters too. So we'll see. Yeah, m- more Am- America Chavez. Well, and, and Tom Cruise. <laughs> now that Tom Cruise has really reinvaded, is, I, hmm. I really do believe Mikey on that. I absolutely one hundred percent believe oh, yeah. that Tom Cruise was supposed to be in there and it got cut. So that was I'm confirmed, forward yeah. to that. I don't think he shot his scenes though. But like, wouldn't they wish they had Tom Cruise now, like in Marvel? Like I, they're like, idiots that they didn't shoot right now. Well, he said it. Yeah. He was in it. That's all I know. So. They, they are idiots if they didn't shoot any of that. That's a missed uh, opportunity. Uh, <laughs> even if they just got him to do the voice for the CG character. You know. Is, is anytime what, is it, like, been, this Mission Impossible is going to be uh, For Secret Invasion? Or Armor Wars? But, look, Secret yeah. Wars, absolutely. <laughs> because, look, we don't need uh, the Tony Stark that we loved that's dead now. We mm. do need uh superior iron man tony stark yeah and i think tom cruise is the guy for it as silly as i think it it, the whole thing was at the beginning i gotta be honest i would rather see that version of tony stark than um to see the beloved uh version that we've you know loved all the way to the the end so you know what i'm 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 kind of glad that fucking iron man superior iron man wasn't in the fucking what what would have Wanda would have done to his ass the way she fucked around and, and worked all the, uh, What mouth? Oh, <laughs> exactly. I got to tell you. You know, it's like, this is like the same problem they created for uh, uh, the new um, uh, Jurassic World. It's like, you you made a character a villain and then you didn't do anything about it. You just said, oh, everybody just sort of forgot that, you know, she destroyed lives, maybe killed people for nothing. I mean, I mean that power. would be like if you took the original Die Hard movie and instead of the ending that you got, uh, uh, you had everybody give themselves up. And it turns out that, uh, you know, you, you have your villain and your main hero can ride off into the sunset Ooh. and be best friends. Yeah, it's just fucking goofy. <laughs> the only way it works is if they had done what we heard rumors of is that it was Mephisto all along. Yeah. That'll fix and everything. If, if they had ended the film with it was Mephisto controlling her, it, it would have been a better ending. Then you you get that opportunity to forgive her because it wasn't her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, just, just yeah. she murdered a lot of people. Yeah. I hard Han, Hans Gruber would have fucking he would have lived, and then he he would have gotten in no trouble for all the shit he did. He, he yeah, if, if Hans Gruber had come back and been buddies with him in, in Die Hard Two and helped yeah, he, him, yeah, he just fucking. <laughs> Killed everybody in the tower. All the shit went down, and all of a sudden they gave him a pass at the end of the movie. Like, right. yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly what they did with the the girl in Jurassic uh, World Dominion. I mean, in, yeah. in, in in Fallen Kingdom, she's she is a villain. Whether she's you, absolutely a villain, she's the reason people are dead, and nobody fucking seems to remember that. It's like if she hadn't pushed that button, the people wouldn't be dying. She did it. She chose empathy for dinosaurs. Over, over and people. It, it breaks Ian's uh, fucking statement. They had their chance, uh, and nature selected us. So, but here we go. Let's let's move into this interesting territory. I guess it's interesting. Florence Pugh's Black Widow to return in Thunderbolt movie. I'm interested. Um, well, I'm, I'm a fan of Florence Pugh, uh, so that's. I think uh, she's great. She's yeah. uh, she is great. She is well, nowhere near biased. as sexy as this young lady. Uh, but she's I mean, fun, I, you know, and she does yeah, have like an interesting she character. Has some swag, you know, I like her swag. She should have been Supergirl for DC. I'm just saying. And I do want to say, despite mm. my dislike of Hawkeye, I, I really do like what's her name here. She's oh, Haley's cool. awesome. Haley's Haley so is fucking cool. She's now so she is a phenomenal yeah. actress. She's such a cute little actor, and I like watching her. She's quirky and fun. Yeah, but she's not fucking Hawkeye. And when I get told I'm going to see a Hawkeye show. I want fucking Hawkeye with a backstory and a real story about him. And she's the fucking side character. Well, you had her backstory and, and mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a, <laughs> the classic fucking Marvel DC, uh, I mean, Marvel uh, Disney uh, bait and switch. You know what I mean? And I'm, it opened up actually with her backstory. That's amazing how they did that. Well, and, and the thing is, is they were thinking they were going to have another season anyway. My thing was, why would you blow the entire opportunity with her as a story lead? You could have taken the, the, the you know, if you're going to do a television series, 
you make the television series about that character. But yeah. you, what you have is the original character of Hawkeye. If you're going to close out his story because the actors are getting too expensive, what you mm-hmm. wanted to do in this first one is just clear up all the stuff about his backstory mm-hmm. so you can just gently move him out. The first right. episode should have been his backstory and an That's introduction right. to her. Um, but anyway, right. uh, 24 looks like he's he's got something to say. Uh, <laughs> now that uh that Florence Pugh story was that the Thunderbolt story again? Is that yeah they're talking about Thunderbolt and I'll go ahead and I'll read a little bit of this. Well yeah, um, a scoop confirmed right there, so this yeah. is pretty good. One. This is written by Edwin Francisco. Florence Pugh will return as Black Widow in Marvel Studios Thunderbolts film. It is the first supervillain movie in the MCU. Florence Pugh debuted as Yelena Belova. In Black Widow, however, it was in Disney Plus's Hawkeye that Florence Pugh completely won over MCU audience. She's right, squad. Yeah, I call bullshit on that statement. I call bullshit on that statement. That's not true. That's not true. Um, I completely agree with all of this is true. That is a personal opinion. And, you know. Completely won over, Gary. Completely it wasn't Thunderbolt Ross a part of the uh, the group Thunderbolts. <laughs> uh, this I'm is curious. I believe so. No, I'm this is yeah. connected to the team. I think so, but I mean, this is one of the many reasons why it didn't make any sense what Kevin Feige had said at CinemaCon. You know, by the time they started work on all of the films that made up. Phase four. Because William Hurt has passed. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, this right. is you... why they should have reintroduced the other one, Sam Elliott. Mm hmm. This... He already played Thunderbolt. Mm-hmm. I think what they mm-hmm. needed, what, why they ended up, why Kevin Feige ended up saying that they needed to go and do some more planning was that there are a lot of changes. And I believe that uh, Victoria Alonso has been made a oh, part yeah. of the plans that they're going to have going forward. Because Can normally. We... Can we gender flip Thunderbolt? Can we make it a woman general now? I think, I think, but but Thunderbolts isn't the only thing. I think that Kevin Feige had a good portion of Phase Five already considered and thought mm-hmm. out, and that this whole meeting that he had talked about was to rethink the entirety of Phase Five, given two very important things. First. You you now have to reconsider everything since you didn't have uh, James Gunn to help you plan out the stuff that you were, were wanting him to do. So you got to reconceptualize that part of it, which the is cosmic the more cosmic stuff. end of mm-hmm. Marvel. Mm-hmm. You also have to take into account that the general public has not been kind to Phase Four. Uh, I'm sorry, but a lot of the, these movies didn't That's do well. That's why it's so silly. That he said that Edwin said that in that article was won over. Like, <laughs> I mean, just just in just for the films alone, Black Widow was not a good movie, and they spent way too much money on something that should have been easier to tell and more mm-hmm. focused on the one character that we were all waiting to see. Right. Not that Florence was bad at all she's phenomenal and i love her yeah i didn't mind role. it the, the, i'm completely the, won the characters over characters yeah. in the story the problem was the story there's no story there's no real story there and it was just all a series of scenes yeah. because it had no logic none none of it was logical and all you ended up doing was making a movie about how black widow seemingly has all these superpowers now that she didn't have before and all these superhuman yeah abilities. dropping far distances into the and, 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 I mean I guess I guess landings. I guess spending all that time with the Avengers kind of gave her superpowers by osmosis or something right, right. Uh, I mean when you see her in the Avengers that's the version of Black Widow I thought we were going to see in this movie, yeah. which is more of a super spy, which is really what yeah. she is. But super yeah, it should have been in... more James Bond meets Jason yeah, Bourne, more Winter period. Soldier, like you know. Yeah, that's so, it. Uh, Twenty-four. Your thoughts on this before we move on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
But real quick with that Thunderbolt, I don't think Mikey he likes scoop. it. <laughs> from, from last year, Mikey did scoop Thunderbolts was being a project. So that was confirmed. So that's another one uh, yes. for Mikey. And uh, like I said, just phase four. Yeah, I mean, from Black Widow, Shang-Chi, oh, Eternals. Don't get me started the re-watch, on Shang-Chi. The rewatchability is so low for this phase. And mm-hmm. Multiverse of Madness is the last capper on this where they're not winning the audiences. Even if they're making money, they're not winning the audiences of uh, this phase. So. And, and that means Spider-Man No Way Home is the only bright spot of this entire phase. And that's Sony, really. <laughs> so I'm gonna give Sony that demo. Yeah, you can give it to them, but they, Sony can't get the they they can't get too excited because then you got to come back with Morbius, Morbius, and, <laughs> Mobius. Well, I'm sorry, Mobius. Thing. And it's like they got to like. <laughs> you know, actually, man, Sony's fucking themselves when they keep making characters around someone that's not even involved. You know, like the main, the, like mm. the main connection is Spider Man. Spider Man's not involved in Morbius, Venom, or this what Madam Web that's coming. They're thinking about yeah. he ain't gonna be in that Weird. motherfucker. Like, what the fuck you doing, man? Like, what? what okay, you're gonna make a Sinister Six movie without Spider Man in that motherfucker either? They're like, what? What's what's going on, man? Why is everything? They're gonna mention Spider Man. He's not in it, but it's everything that has everything to do with him. Stupid ass shit, man. People are just fucking dumb as fuck, man. Yeah, you know. Like, there is one thing that Kevin Feige could do that would really mess them and everyone else up, but it would reset everything nicely. Just go ahead and say, you know what? Phase four is the end. We're going to begin in phase five. It's the ultimates. And go with all the ultimate versions. You could recast love- all the main roles, tell those stories, <laughs> and... But I, wait, 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 wait. wait. But, uh, but what version of Marvel are we looking at now? Because I know no- nothing that we've seen... None of these guys are the originals. Mm-hmm. None of them. Yeah. None of them. So, I, yeah. I mean, if you look at Captain America, you look at the suits, you look at, you know, Hawkeye and fucking Falcon. That's not the original fucking Falcon. That's not. Hawkeye doesn't even have a suit, man. Mm-hmm. Hawkeye run around in jeans and a jacket. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's the same shit. It's the same shit you've seen uh, Winter Soldier doing now in his show. Yep. I mean, this shit is whack as fuck, man. It's like motherfuckers go from having a suit to just being motherfuckers in, in jeans and, and a t shirt. Yeah, uh, cool, the ultimate cool. universe cool, man. that that's what they should go with they should just go ahead and do a film version of the entire ultimate universe and start from the beginning recast all the main roles you got a new tony stark you got a new bruce banner you have the uh, uh, the way they introduce the fantastic four all of it fits together and and do it from there and you fix all your problems you have a brand new group of heroes and uh you know uh, you can also read all the comics, yeah, which yeah, are all, right. all currently out there. And the fans, it includes the X Men. And the old people, they wouldn't. They wouldn't go for it, man. Oh, up to a point, but at least you can keep Sam Jackson. He's the only. He's the only constant. <laughs> yeah, he'll be back no matter yeah, what. Even the real fucking Nick Fury. I'll fucking get him out of here too. Let's <laughs> get the white oh, Nick man. Fury. <laughs> well, this is what I keep telling people. Twenty four is that. Um, all these Marvel movies are picked from the comics that didn't sell. These are, and it's, that's all Feige has done is picked from comics, uh, versions of the comics that nobody liked. It's sort of like DC up to this point. They've been keep jumping to the, the, the new 52, which didn't mm. sell. It failed. Uh, so Marvel weird. comics failed at some of these titles and Feige. That's what he wants to pull in. And mm-hmm. and that's what Hamada and Emmerich wanted to do. Dude, it's, it's like mm-hmm. it's like it's like both sides are fucking. Uh, uh, I don't know, man. It's, it's it's like it's like they're basing their movie universes on the versions of the heroes that fucking shit the bed, like the you know, <laughs> uh, New Fifty Two and what all new, all different. Is 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 that is that what, what, what the, all this well, shit? That was Marvel. That is all pretty different. much it. Marvel. Well, they all and DC, DC so you all, all, all different from Marvel. Right. Both right. of the, the worst phases of, of comics that motherfuckers <laughs> ever had from both companies. And like this is what they decide to put out there, man. That's, That's my nice cinematic shit, universe. Man. STB. <laughs> STB. They're completely won over, Gary. They're completely yeah. won over with Florence. The cinematic universe is around the fucking worst parts of our comic <laughs> phases. Yeah, come on. Get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah. And with that in mind, here we go to a new decision. That Marvel Studios wants to grab Jason Momoa for some DC films. 
from yeah. DC Films. Uh, this is by Mikey and Edwin. Um, I actually read this on, on one of our other shows, but uh, I don't mind coming back to this because it's interesting. You know, I laughed. I said, wouldn't it be funny if they made him Namor? Where <laughs> the other guy? Oh, you know, that way he's Aquaman in both universes. No, yeah, he, yeah, he'll, yeah. Yeah, he'll be the motherfucker that swims for both That'll sides, right? <laughs> that will be dope. Marvel's so but, stupid, uh, they'll do it. But, and there's even a joke about it here, because once again, Mikey has the same sense of humor as me. He's very cheeky. And he fucking makes a, a joke about, uh, and no, he's not going to be Namor. Um, here it is. Undoubtedly, it's not fellow Atlantean Namor right here. He's where he said it. Perfect. <laughs> but it would be. It's sure better than what their Why fucking not? idea for it is now. Oh, man. He's it's... no longer from Atlantis. He's from Aztec culture. Oh, my God. What kind of forever? He's Tihotahican. Is what he is. Tio This phase, man. It's <laughs> like, phase. it's like, are you fucking kidding me? What are they You're gonna doing? take a, a, him from being an Atlantean. He's really the first fucking comic hero okay. from for Marvel, and you're gonna you're gonna do that to him. Him and Human Torch, the original it's, Human it's, Torch. It's one of two things. Either they they look at it like, yo, I don't I don't want to, you know, Aquaman in Atlantis. I don't want to fuck with that, or Marvel is just so woke that they don't want to fucking they don't want to offend the Atlantis once again. It's there, right? it's uh Victoria Alonso is the bad idea person, she's the one pushing bad ideas at Marvel. Oh, uh, Feige is doing his job obeying her. Uh, I'm sorry, Bill Cosby pops many say obey. I think of Bill Cosby when, when he starts talking about it. obey, well, what what a weird swim. word. <laughs> what, what, so, will he swim? In the, in this Black Panther, is it like what I don't know, dude. Um, water powers. It's a good question. I don't know much about this guy they cast because I got to be honest, I don't care. Um, I really and he's from don't. Where, where, where is his name more supposed to be from again? Uh, he is supposed to be from an ancient Aztec culture. He's Teotihuacan. So he's uh, not even swimming. Yeah, Just this is Namor. this is your new Namor right here. It's got the eyebrows for it, but uh, it's a bad idea to make him um, ancient He's Aztec. I'm, I'm just not unless idea. they combine uh, the culture of Atlantis as being what inspired ancient Aztec culture. If they go that direction, I'll be fine with it. But if they just go straight Aztec, it's it's an insult to the Mexican culture. I'm, I'm just culture. not excited for that film. Uh, the Thor film coming out next. This is whole phase, man. I'm not excited for anything yeah, <laughs> coming man, out. Man. Only thing I'm looking forward to is a Fantastic Four. And I, yeah, it, that's... when we start getting reports on it, it's gonna what be what determines well, whether I. Stay and that's excited. Phase Five, right, and beyond. So this this phase is terrible. Like, let's get past this phase. And, you know, yeah. So. Man, um, I don't know what they're going to do with, with Momoa, if they're going to bring him in. Uh, that'll be interesting. I don't know. I don't care. They've already got Jared Leto. Uh, and shit, you know, Momoa, is, I fucking love that guy. I've been a fan of his since 03 yeah. when he was on um, Atlantis. Uh, he was already an Atlantean. No, <laughs> he was on uh, Stargate Atlantis, and I fucking love that show. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, fuck it. Let's move on to the next one because there's really not much about that one. This one, I've I've got a lot of interest in. Um, the Fantastic Four. This is written by Francisco. The MCU is looking for a big name director to helm the Fantastic Four. Just a month ago, the Fantastic Four saw its director John Watts leave. It happened around the same time as Doctor Strange and Multiverse of so Madness was delivered. A version of Reed Richards. Dumb Reed Richards, really dumb. Aim Cameo. <laughs> what? I'm going to tell you what he's going to do before he does it, so you can stop him. Oops. Uh, Marvel Studios original. I mean, he was such a cuck character on that. It was just really stupid. Turned him into spaghetti. I'm like, fuck it, you know. Uh, fuck you guys. Goodness. Fuck Marvel. Fuck Alin uh, Victoria Alonso and her strong uh, whammon. I get so tired of this that, shit. Uh, Fantastic Four, he's not even going to be a part of it. What's that? Uh, the actor, Krasinski, or whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah. 
I heard, I heard he's not even going to be in the movie. He's it, like, whatever they're going to come with this new Fantastic Four, I heard he, they're going to recast a whole nother guy. Uh, who said that? <laughs> I've not heard any of this. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm telling you, the reason why is because since he was like the fan picked or whatever, yeah, they put him in there for, uh, they put him in there for the, for the fan service uh, yeah. movie. But then when it comes to this new Fantastic Four, I heard they're casting a whole new dude. I mean, maybe, you wow. know, in case from? they do, I can tell you, Mikey didn't talk about that because uh, <laughs> that is not what Mikey no, said. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying that's. I heard that that's that could be another thing that can happen just for the simple fact that they already, they already used his. Uh, they already used him up, man. His version. Yeah, up. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, that that could very well be the case. Uh, right. I also heard rumors that uh, rumor, rumor. Right, right, that exactly. They could be looking at Jason Momoa for uh, the thing. Well, that one uh, I thought was a good idea. That'd be interesting. That'd be a different take on that character and would explain why he's so freaked out once he becomes the thing. Uh, because, you know, he's a big guy, ladies' man, and now he's uh. this, you know. Uh, that kind of ruins his game a little bit. But uh, uh, I look. If they're looking for a director, I don't know why they are looking for a director. Kevin Feige owes Edgar Wright big. Okay, let Edgar Wright direct the movie. I'm 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 not seeing where the problem is. You know, Edgar Wright should be the director for this film since he got kicked off of Ant Man. So, mm-hmm. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, since he left Ant Man of his he own left, volition. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, I, I just, he's a talented guy. And if you can look at all his movies and the fact that he is a big freaking nerd, uh, I can't see why you wouldn't have this guy direct your Fantastic Four film. You know, his abilities as a director, the way he casts, I mean, it, it, it makes no sense. Why you can't like have someone like say, Lily James, be the Invisible Woman? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I always thought that John Bernthal would make a good thing, but you know, what do I know? <laughs> I'm just a guy who read a whole bunch of comics and who, for for my my money, uh, uh, Fantastic Four was my ultimate favorite Marvel book. But you know. I, you know, they don't I'm not argue. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, we'll uh, go ahead and move on to the next thing, which I think everybody is. And it's a two. It's a two parter. This is really one thing, in my opinion, uh, which is um, this little baby, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery wants Zack Snyder for R-rated DC Black Label films, um, which will directly impact the other article. Um, and I think this is a nice move. Um, I know that Zaslav is a Zack Snyder fan, despite the fact that it's actually Zaslav that brought us, um, uh, fucking Ezra Miller, you know, <clears throat> he forgives him. It's something Zaslav is look- overlooking with. Oh, that. it's gotta be money related though. I think it's more of, well, it's, it's probably another conversation, but just, well, also I think it's, he it's impressed people. people. He impressed a lot of people with the fucking Oscar noms, man. Mm. You know, so that that made a few heads turn at uh, the uh, on at the corporate level. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I think a lot of attitudes, including David Zaslav, is going to change about Clint Eastwood when it gets reminded how many Oscars Clint Eastwood has brought Warner Brothers mm-hmm. and could still bring Warner Brothers. So. Um, but I think this is interesting. What do you guys think? Uh, and what do you think its impact will be on this other article? Black Label. Right For here. those of you who are not reading comic books right now, if you like some seriously well-told stories that stretches mm-hmm. the boundaries of what comics could be, whether it's, it's stories about uh, horror or stories that are kind of comedic or action or whatever. The Black Label series 
is the best of the best of what you can do with DC. In fact, they have a book out on the stands right now. Right now, that is an Aquaman black label story. Hmm. And when I saw it, I, I, I remember thinking, wow, okay, and read what the plot was, and I thought, wow, that is really interesting. It's, mm-hmm. it's a story under sea that combines horror and, and a creature from space. And it is a, 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 about a, Cthulhu. Uh, a, a, a military project, a space military project, that crash lands, like a lot of other projects, if you notice for NASA and others, always have the plan that when something goes wrong, they'll have a crash into the ocean. And the idea is, what if it brought something back into the deepest, Cloverfield depths? And so it's Aquaman doing that. And that's just one black label story. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, I think, uh, I think this particular story... Uh, and having uh, uh, Zack Snyder head up a black label section for uh, DC films is genius. Well, what time- impact do you think it's going to have on this? So it kind of leads to this, right? Because it's really is Zack Snyder uh, doing projects within this 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 black label, like one off stories, like what what the the first Joker film was supposed to be a one off story, but yeah, yeah. But, but uh, with these sequels, uh, is right. this still not going to fall under the black label? Well, this will be. This is an example of a black label. Like it doesn't. It doesn't have to connect this to a fall Justice League storyline. Yeah, yeah. So it won't connect. So this because with Todd Phillips. Yeah. Now, personally, I, I don't think this is a very good comic that they're basing this on. Once again, it's not that mm. bad. Uh, um, yeah, the word it's, there is that. It's not that. It's bad. not that it's bad. Uh, I don't concept. think it's that good. Um, is <laughs> yeah, my like problem. Three yeah, three jokers. Not yeah, a bad read. Not a bad read. So, uh, you know, once again, the whole thing about the first F- Todd Phillips movie was that Joker is an unreliable narrator. Mm-hmm. So therefore, we don't know what's real and what isn't. Are there bloody footsteps? What What's real? Uh, to do a sequel to it as an actual sequel, uh, I think it's a mistake. To, it it, it, it kind of screws up the premise of the first story mm-hmm. to do it, but um, they're going to do it. You know, well, I don't know. Zaslav could change his fucking mind now that everybody's fucking gone. Yeah. Uh, we could uh-huh. see this story disappear really quickly uh, if he was not a power behind it. But Mikey did write this article. So, mm-hmm. uh, and he wrote in here that uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker sequel now has a title and it hints at Batman three jokers comic book on June 10th, 2021, we scooped, that Batman three jokers could influence Joker too. for the record director, Todd Phillips called the movie Joker, uh, folly oh, ado in, oh, yeah, in uh, fully ado. In addition, he posted the scripts cover on the Instagram account, but why Joker fully ado, uh, or Deus, um, depending on do. if it's, you know, do day, you know, do. I don't know. But in other words, uh, the movie focuses on multiple Jokers. And he said, an identical, identical or similar mental disorder affected, affecting two or more individuals, usually the members of close family. So, I mean, there is a chance that in his way of telling story that they're so delusional, they begin to populate each other's delusions. Well, and that's is the it, part that's taken from the comic, right? That's why I said the three Jokers. So I'm, right? I'm like, I... Yeah. <sighs> They all have the same just, I gotta see it. Once a real joker. Oh, shit, now I think mistake we're making, a mistake we're making is assuming this is a direct sequel to the story we saw in the first Joker film, right? Maybe this. If it's not, then one take off. that number two off it. Kids. Well, it doesn't say two. It's it's this 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 foyer I do. It's a again that mental condition. In so the article, say, though, Mikey refers to it as Joker two. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna like, say Mikey's wrong. <laughs> I'm not. I'll never call him wrong. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if it's a black label, if that that first article you had, if it's a line of stories that can be un, you know, disconnected, uh, one offs. I mean, it's possible. Todd Phillips can make an original story, but it still have Joaquin Phoenix in it. I mean, and, and Joaquin, and, you know, up to this point has been against doing sequels. So, but, uh, look, I would like to see it 
if they keep it separated mm-hmm. from everything else. If this continues to be the story of a man who has a mental condition and identifies with dressing up like this and causing problems in the city, I like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I like that a lot. If you want to make this part of a, a, you know, attach Batman and other things to it, no, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Because it, it'll begin to fall apart. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, I just think overall, I think Todd Phillips, since he's gone through the trouble of writing this, you either make a decision as to whether or not you want to fund it. If you want to fund it, give him the money, leave him the F alone, and let him make the movie. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to have... If you're going to make a black label section for this, go ahead and contact uh, Zack Snyder. See what he has to say as far as any other movies outside of mm-hmm. just this film. Mm-hmm. And, and and get his input along with Todd Phillips' input for all movies that you make under the black label section of films. Because there are a lot of characters you could choose and it doesn't always have to be villains. I think the next one I would do would be The Question. And you could make it for around the same amount of money that you made the first Joker for, about sixty million dollars. And yeah. you you'd make yeah. it like an extremely paranoid version of the X Files, mixed with uh, just about every paranoid, delusional type hero you've ever had. Of course, then um, again, you start running into a formula with these films if you do that. But there are geez. ways to go. Uh, Twenty four wants to say something. Yeah, go ahead. Who, me? Yeah. You were yeah. wanting to say something. All right. No, I was thinking, like, uh, I heard they're already working on the question. And uh, and then as far as, like, the Joker stuff, I mean, think about this, man. We're not even sure if Joaquin is even the real Joker at this point. Mm-hmm. So what happens if they do this three Joker shit, they bring in Willem Dafoe from what I'm hearing, and all of a sudden – come to find out that everybody's been following Joaquin and he's not even the real Joker. Then what? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so many ways you can you can play this thing out to where, you know, you, you thought you were looking at one guy and everybody's so diehard over Joaquin's Joker and he's not even the real motherfucker. So, yeah. at the end, actually, you can, you can take this to a part three, you know, make it a, a, a trilogy, and at the end, you get to see who the real Joker is, and that's the guy that you invite over to the DC universe if they want to bring him in in some way or capacity and that's the real joke right there it's it nicholson saying that classic line wing bat terrorizes city wait till they get a load of me <laughs> <laughs> okay so it should be it should be this is look black label in one particular form is almost like an entire label section subsection of dc comics that's kind of sort of twilight zone kind of sort of Mm r-rated pg-13 almost x depending on the story i still think that you could go ahead and just do individual stories that don't have to connect to any sort of overarching type of, of 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 storytelling with the main dc films you know, you could just choose characters to, to, to do stories about. You could do a Zatanna movie. You could do and, an even smart yeah. thing. And I got to tell you, I, I really do see this as a smart move, putting Zach in charge of this. Um, uh, you know, because I don't think he's the best storyteller out there. His best uh, work is when it's based on somebody else's storytelling. Mm-hmm. And uh, 300, for example, Watchmen. Uh, but I, I, I will say that uh, his being put in this position is great and by the way 24 if 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 they do get willem defoe to play one of the jokers i'm all in i'm all in and it i will absolutely be just like this wow yes i will fucking buy it no how much more wow yes i will be that fucking into it um you know i would be about this the way chris walken is about cowbell i got a fever that's right. I have a fever for Willem Dafoe as a Joker. Yeah, I mean, Dafoe put it out there that he had an idea. This is like over, I think about a year ago. So uh, mm-hmm. this is very possible. And again, this could be a totally disconnected story from what you saw in the first one. So yeah, I, I exactly. like this Black Label idea. I, I do like it. Any Parasite. final statement, guys? You know, or, you know, you, you can you can take that and also bring in Jared Leto. <laughs> 
then just go crazy with it, right? Yeah, you can just go crazy with it. <laughs> I, or as I the Joker would say, let's get nuts. Let's no, get wait, nuts, that was man. Batman. Well, that was Bruce Wayne. You want to get nuts? Oh. Let's get nuts. <laughs> you know, if there was a character that you could the devil by the pale moonlight. <laughs> that was a dope line, man. That, that was man. parasite. <laughs> that look when... on his face of what? Yeah, what the? <laughs> I asked that of all my victims. I just like the way it sounds. <laughs> uh, you wrap up, Keith. You were about to say something, buddy. Uh, the, the the only other thing I would think about doing is taking from other villains. I mean, parasite would be a good idea. Uh, I would also think about uh, 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 Solomon Grundy. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah even even yeah, even. I mean, it doesn't have to even just be a Batman-related villain. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be villains, but there are all different ways mm-hmm. to go with this. And if yeah. they just use a little thought and dive into the IP a bit, you could find something like the Spectre. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of the characters that you and I were hoping for with other shows. And we know it's going to be cost effective, right? Zazzle's in the building, and the first Joker right. what, only spent, what, 50, 60 million? About so 60. They could be smart about this. They could they could got something here. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And, um, well, basically, we've, we've managed to get through another episode, sadly, without Arwen here. Um, but I, I will say that I, I'm going to commend myself. That Keith said black label multiple times, and I didn't turn into a racial joke. I want you guys to say awesome job. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting. I thought it was. <laughs> you were waiting because you're like, oh my God, Keith is it's saying coming. we're black, and Gary it's hasn't coming. pounced on him yet. <laughs> uh, angry white guy. <laughs> angry white guy. Fucking cracker. <laughs> but uh, um, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, I want to tell everybody again. Um, you will eventually be finding my partner Keith here on uh, Babylon 5 again with Steve on Mondays. It will be happening, so keep your eyes out. Uh, you can find Sil Abdul on his own show here. What's the name of it again? You renamed it, and it throws me every time. <laughs> my show? Uh, yeah. Well, I got a couple series, but Coffee Talk. No, the big the one. one. Which one? Uh, 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 Scoop Center with Mikey Sutton. Scoop Center. Yeah, yeah I giggle yeah. at that. It's like, because all I think is Sports Center. Exactly. <laughs> that's what we was going for. Yeah. So we got you. <laughs> uh, so you can check that out on Sil Abdul's channel. Uh, 24 7 Future has a show that's coming out tonight, uh, co hosted by uh, Fat Steven Scholar, uh, mutual good friend. And, uh, and of course, our other friend, Baron, will be there. And it is called Prime Time King. That's right. Prime Time Kings. Um, it's it's a fun show every Sunday. Don't miss it. Uh, and uh, Good stuff. It's okay. It's when, <laughs> it's, when, it's great when twenty four is on here, but the minute Steven gets on and starts talking, I'm like I tune out. Just like I do when he's uh, like co-hosting our show on TGIF. He starts talking. I just start, you watch me. I just sort of like. You know what? I I I I think I'm I'm really lucky to be on a show with with all you guys, and and to see what you guys were able to produce, Sill and Twenty Four is just amazing. Of course, you know I love Gary. Gary's fantastic. I'm and, okay. and and morning coffee with Gary is definitely my morning uh, go to every morning because he only well, has nobody a show. knows what I'm going to talk about. It's That's like- right. It could be like a, a really show. funny episode where I'm shitting on things, and then I could start talking about <laughs> like sad, personal stuff that's happened to friends or myself. You know, I'm like, it's just me talking over yeah. coffee. And uh, as long as he has coffee, he has a show. Yep, and that's that's actually the tagline, which is the show that lasts as long as my coffee. And because uh, once the coffee's gone, I'm done. I want to go. I got to eat my breakfast, take my morning shit. So. Um, with that said, <laughs> I want to thank you guys. Um, this show wouldn't be happening if it weren't for you guys being a part of it. And uh, and I deeply appreciate both of you guys down there, and Keith, of course. Uh, but 24, I love you, brother. Uh, Sil, I like you as a friend. And uh, <laughs> like, like a I love you too, man. buddy. I love you a lot. Um, I like <laughs> Come on, let's talk you gay. <laughs> but this is um, Scoop Zone with 24 7 Future Me, Sil Abdul, Keith, and myself today. And get up for lunch. Hey guys, thanks for watching Pop Culture Minefield. 
If you've enjoyed the show, please make sure to like, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell icon for updates on our shows and channel. Also, please leave a comment, and we'd like to know what you thought of the episode, as well as letting us know if there's something you'd like us to cover in a future episode. Don't forget that you can become a member of Pop Culture Minefield now. Make sure to visit our membership page and merch store at popcultureminefield.com. You can always find Pop Culture Minefield on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. 